Okay, today we're going to be talking about uh, section 1.2. And really the main thing I want to uh, cover today is uh, to talk about a specific form that we want to get a matrix into when we're trying to solve a system. So we've kind of talked about that uh, a little bit up to now, but uh, at this point we're going to get very specific about that. So the form that we're trying to get at is called echelon form. Okay? And echelon form is defined by three properties. So the first one of these uh, is that um, if there are any rows of all zeros, they're at the bottom of the matrix. So you swap rows to get those at the bottom. The leading entry, remember that's the first non-zero entry. So the leading entry in each row uh, is in a column to the right of the leading entry in the row above it. And I'll show you that in just a sec. Uh, the third one is that all entries in a column below a leading entry are zeros. So we've done that up to now. You know, we get our leading entry and then we zero out below it. So that's that idea. Here's an example. Um, the black squares here represent non-zero values and they're the leading entries in each of these rows. And so you can see here we have a leading entry and zeros underneath. Here we have another leading entry, zeros underneath. And notice that this leading entry is to the right of the one before it. And here's another leading entry and it's to the right of the one that came before it. Okay, so that second property is basically what gets you this stair-step kind of structure in your matrix. All right, let's see, here's another one. This one's also in echelon form. Um, leading entry here, zeros below it. Uh, another leading entry, zeros below it, and it's to the right of the previous one. And uh, we have a row of zeros, and it's at the bottom, so we satisfy all the criteria. Now, sometimes you want to go a little bit farther um, and get your matrix in reduced echelon form. So if it's in reduced echelon form, well, that means that it's in echelon form, plus it satisfies two more properties. Okay, And these properties are that uh, each leading entry is a 1. So you scale the rows to make each leading entry equal to 1. And that 1 is the only non-zero entry in its column. So you zero out not only below it, but also above it. So here's an example of a matrix that's in reduced echelon form. Each leading entry is a 1. Um, and it's the only non-zero entry in its column. So we've zeroed out below here, zeroed out above and below, and zeroed out uh, above in this case. All right, here's another one. Uh, this one's in reduced echelon form because each leading entry, we've only got two, and they're each one, and we've zeroed out above and below each one. There's a row of zeros at the bottom. Okay, so that's in reduced echelon form. Now for for purposes of uh, just solving a system, typically you just want to get it in echelon form. Although there will be one particular case that I'll talk about later uh, in another section coming up where you want to get it in uh, echelon or reduced echelon form. It just makes life easier then. But for the most part at this point, uh, echelon form is fine. Now um, I'll show you a couple of things about these forms. Uh, one thing to note is that the reduced echelon form of a matrix is unique. So that means that no matter what sequence of row operations you use to get a matrix in reduced echelon form, uh, you'll end up at the same place. Not so for the echelon form. Okay, It's not unique. That means that all of you could be working on the same matrix and end up with a different echelon form of the same matrix. And that's because you can scale a row Okay, multiply a row by a constant and get a different echelon form. Still be an echelon form, but it would be a different matrix. Okay, so the reduced form is unique, the echelon form is not. Okay, so you either want to, uh, to get your matrix in echelon or reduced echelon form when you're solving a system. And uh, the latter 
To get it in reduced echelon form takes more work, but when you do that, the solution is obvious. And so let me show you what I mean by that. Um, here we have a, an augmented matrix that's already in echelon form. Notice leading entry, zeros underneath, another leading entry, zeros underneath and uh, no rows of zeros. Each leading entry is to the right of the one before it. So it's an echelon form. Um, and then we do use back substitution to solve for uh, the uh, variable. So start with the third row and the equation for the third row we get 7 times x3 equals 7 so we solve for x3. Then we back substitute to solve for x2 in the second row so second row says negative 2 times x2 plus 5 x3 equals 7. And we know that x3 is 1. We just solve for that. So we plug that in here. And we end up with x2 equals negative 1. And then we keep going back up again to the first row. Equation for the first row looks like x1 minus 3x2 equals 5. And we know what x2 is because we just solved for that. So we plug it in and then we end up with x1 equals 2. So that's the method that uh, we were using in section 1.1 and probably what you want to continue using for the most part. However, if you choose to get your matrix in reduced echelon form, okay, so this is the same matrix but in reduced echelon form, then notice that uh, you end up with a solution values of your variables just sitting in the right side right hand column because if you look at each row you know the first row says 1 times x1 equals 2 second row 1 times x2 equals negative 1 and so forth so if you go back up you can see we got x1 is 2 x2 negative 1 1 so 2 negative 1 1 and there's 2 negative 1 1 so that's uh, one advantage of getting it in reduced echelon form because then the solution is obvious and you don't have to actually do any, uh, any back substitution. So it's kind of your mileage may vary. Whichever you like uh, will be fine. Um, and at this point, we'll stop here and we'll pick up here in the next video.